Canada is going back to the World Cup. In case you missed it, they are heading back to soccer's biggest stage for the first time since 1986. So naturally, we're heading on over to FIFA to see what it's going to take for this Canadian men's national team's golden generation to win the World Cup in 2022. Dear Mr. Jay Herdman, you know, naturally we made, you, know, you guys get it. We'd like to inquire about your interest and availability in managing the Canada national team. I don't need to read the rest of the email. I am absolutely interested. I've rejected plenty of offers. I'm sorry, Iceland, New Zealand, Romania. None of you guys had what it takes. This is the job I'm looking for. This is the job that we are accepting. Reject, I'm just kidding. All right, accept offer. It's a new journey. I don't know what this is gonna look like, but it's a 12 month contract. Great to have you on board, Mr. J. Herdman. Herdy's a very good looking man. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but let's see what this is gonna look like. Now that we're the coach, John Herdman has got an incredible job to do. He's gotta take a look at the depth and see what we can do. So this is our first squad, so let's make some changes. Let's just take a little look. I'm sorry, this is, we gotta be cutthroat. This is it. Boran, you're in. Crepeau, you're in. St. Clair slowly progressing up the line. You're in. I need two left backs. Davies, my boy Adekubi. Gutierrez, I'm sorry, my man, you just didn't quite make the cut. 70 was the cutoff. Four center backs, Kamal Miller, Henry, you stack your big money move over to Porto with Azorio, Buchanan, Hoylet. Samuel Piet snuck his way back in here, I noticed that. I think it's fair to keep Samuel Piet. Piet's been with us along the way, so is Mark Anthony K, Liam Miller, Liam Frazier, Joe David, look at that increase, 83. We got Kyle Laren, Ugbo, Cavallini, Frazier, you make the cut. This is it. This is the team that's going to the World Cup. We got our four strikers because we play a two striker system. We got a lot of the boys who've been with us along the way. Let's see what we can do. All right, so let's take a look at who Canada got in our first attempt to win this World Cup. In, in real life, I'd actually, I would take this. It's not bad. You got one pretty heavy hitter. It's Germany. You got Ukraine. You got Czech Republic. You got Canada. I think this is relatively doable. We're going to sim it. As always, Coach John Herman is killing it at club level and country level, but you guys can't see the club level. 85, so let's go into it. First match against Ukraine. And take a look at the team sheet we want to get going. It's in a 4-2-3-1 right now, which I personally do like the look of this, but I got to put my own little tactical uh, brain on here. So I'm going to keep it in this uh, in this 4-2-3-1 wide. I like, I like that system. No, I'm not. I'm going into 4-4-2. We played that more and I need to get... I need to get Laren on the pitch. All right, let's take a look. Oh, <laughs> brain fart. So Hutch definitely retired before the World Cup at the, at the nice age of 39. He didn't make it in. Emotional, yes, probably, but he's on the coaching staff with me. Uh, that's, that's where we need him, it's, it's fine. But all right, let's take a look at this starting 11. It's a 4-4-2. We're gonna go Borean and Net. Johnston, we're gonna throw it at right back. We threw Richie out at left back. Both of them are playing wing back positions too, so that makes like the chemistry a little off, but that's fine. Kamal Miller and Vittoria as our two center backs. Azorio and Steph, we're going all out attack. Buchanan on the right, Davies on the left. David and Laren up front. I mean, the man put up 14 goals in World Cup qualifying, don't you forget that. All right, we got Crepo on the bench. Scott Kennedy on the bench. Daniel Henry's a 70. Do we throw Henry in instead of Vittori? Vittori, man, you got 31 pace. I, these are the type of coaching decisions that win you a World Cup. You just, you, you simply, you look at the pace, man. Henry's, Henry's got you doubled. I'm just, I'm just, I just, you twisted my arm. And Scott Kennedy's got him. Ah, but he's a lefty too. No, we're going to do that. We're going to have Henry in. He, he worked his way in, just naturally being gifted when it comes to speed. Something that I, I, I cherish here. All right, I like this. This is a solid looking squad. This is a definitely a solid looking squad. I feel I feel confident. I feel like we can get out of the group at least in our first attempt. Let me know in the comments if you guys would change anything up, but this is the starting 11 I am going to go with. All right, guys, here it is. The first match you're going to see Canada play since 1986 in the World Cup. We're taking on Ukraine. It's going to get emotional. We're doing the quick sim. Let's see how we do. Three points is almost a must when it comes to either Ukraine or... Ah, it's one. It's one point. Jonathan David scores the scores the World Cup first ever World Cup goal for Canada after putting out a duck in '86. That's fine. That's fine. Decent result. Decent result. Things got emotional. Things got emotional in the first one. But the key thing is that Germany won. So Germany's putting themselves in a good position to qualify. We're doing okay. If we get anything against Germany, that's a that's a plus. And then we need to beat Czech Republic. So we didn't make things easy on ourselves. We're going back in. We're going back into Germany. 
This is a this is gonna be a scary one. All right, quick sim. How we doing? Don't get blown out. Don't get blown out. Four one. It's because Hutch was on the bench. It's, if he was in, man, I'm telling you, things could have been different. But all right, that's not good for the uh, the chemistry there. I mean, four one loss. It's all right. Jonathan David's got a second in the World Cup. We got him buzzing. Czech Republic, Canada. Winner, if someone takes three points here, has a very good chance to go to the knockouts. We're doing quick sim. We, we made some big managerial changes. Me and Atiba had a heart-to-heart, -heart and we lost. David's got a third of the tournament, too. That's tough. That's tough. Reflection is the key word. This is the, what we're going to take away. We're going to learn from this because we're going to... We're going to go back to the start of the draw. We're going to shuffle things up. We're going to try this again. Uh, it's not it's not the best showing. It's it's got it's got the 1986 vibes. We did score. So I mean, we've improved but we finished bottom of the table with 1 point. It's not good enough. All right, everyone. So, we lost our first attempt and and we lost pretty miserably. We got 1 point. It's it's not good enough, but it's not totally fair. And I didn't say I was going to do this with the most honor. But I said I would do it with, honestly, the most realistic. Now, if you look at World Cup qualifying, Kyle Lahren has scored 13 goals. If you look at players in, like, UEFA, Kane and Memphis Depay have 12. Those players overall are 90-85. Kyle Lahren is sitting at a 74. It's a slap in the face. So we're just, we're just gonna, we're gonna touch that a little bit. Just a, just a little bit, because, you know, it's a, it's, it's simply, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. So let's go in and just play with the overalls here. Okay, okay. This is where the fun begins. Trying to give Kyle Lahren, the man who put up 13 World Cup qualifying goals, more than Kane, more than Depay, a 74 overall. You're, you're, you're shooting us in the foot before we're even getting started. His finishing. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put that up. You, you ever watch? You see the goal that sent us to the World Cup? That's what I'm talking about. He's not missing that. It's a 90. Heading accuracy is fair. We're gonna throw that up in the 80s. Dribbling, curve on the ball. Again, if you watch the man score, you see the goal against the US guys, remember that? That was, that was curved to it. So, I mean, if you're gonna beat the US keeper like that, I mean, his free kick accuracy, we're not gonna, we're not gonna lie. We're not gonna, we're gonna be, on, we're gonna be somewhat honest. It's probably still 70. His mentality, if you're part of John Herdman's team, let me tell you, the mentality is through the roof. Now, if you're asking me, now that's a proper Kyle Aaron. We're gonna save that, update the squads. Now this is more like it guys, 84 overall Kyle Lahren, you can't even say it's not that unfair. When it comes to the World Cup, when it comes to playing for Canada, this man is class, trying to give us a 74. We gave him a decent 10 overall rating boost, so that should help us out a little bit for this next uh, World Cup attempt we're going to do. It's time for the second crack right now, and we're going to take a look. The group has been settled, it's a different group obviously, but it's still relatively similar to the first group we went through when we got knocked out. We got a heavy hitter, we got France, we have Norway and Ireland, both in my opinion are beatable. Plus we have a juiced up Kyle Aaron, which is, you know, the 74 was unacceptable. We had to go to an 84. So let's see what Canada can do here. It's France. We are taking on for our second attempt. It, I mean, I don't know if it's best to start out with, with the hardest match and then work your way up, but I mean, we're taking on the reigning, the reigning champs. Uh, I, I don't know. They got an interesting system. They got the 3 4 1 2. Komen, Fakir playing on the wing backs. You never know. There's there's some confidence in there, but we gotta we gotta juiced up Kyle Lahren. Now it's time to see what we can do. We're gonna sim this match. I would be happy with a draw. Re really I'd be happy with a draw. And we got a draw. Alright. I'll take that. A draw against France will take that 100 percent Drawing France the first time around was fantastic. You cannot argue that, but these are the type of matches. We need to win if we want a chance of getting through the group. It's simple. We're quick simming. A draw would be manageable. I think a lot. Oh, baby. Okay. Okay. Our juiced up Laren came on. We didn't need to juice up David or Davies because they already got great ratings. So it's fair. And all three of them are on. Jonathan David, once again. Kyle Laren, Alfonso Davies. Odegaard did pick up a red in the first minute. It's worth noting. But Canada gets their first ever win in the FIFA World Cup. They got four points now and are pretty much a shoe in to at least go to their first knockout match. Final group stage match coming up. We got four points right now and look very much favorites to move on to the next round, to the knockout stages. We got Ireland. This should be, I mean, we should be heavy favorites. Let's see what we can do. We haven't touched the starting 11 and I don't think I'm going to because 
I just, I feel confident. Quick sim, one nothing. Jonathan David, once again, that's two tournaments back to back. The guy has put up three goals. So we are 100% moving on to the next round. So Canada tops the group and with it in the round of 16, we see a very kind draw. Canada versus Poland. I would be shocked if we could win it on literally our second attempt, but let's see. I would be, I would be shocked. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna, it's gonna, happen. it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Quick sim, Canada versus Poland. Oh, down to the Davis Award again. In his two World Cup appearances, he's had seven, seven goals. The, you know, he's just that good, but that's tough. That's tough. It's just, it's heartbreak for Canada. Let's try this again. Now we've had two World Cup failures for Canada. So like the first time after the first failure, we, you know, we gave Kyle Aaron an actually relatively fair FIFA rating. Went over it with our, uh, our video on the rise of Ismail Kone. It's only fair to assume that he's just gonna get better and better and better. He's gonna start for CF Montreal. He'll probably get a move to Bologna and then to Inter Milan and then win, win, win a champ. It's just, it's not the natural progression. So what we're gonna do as we did with, uh, Kyle Aarons, we're gonna increase that because it's just, it's a shame to see this incredible profile of player that John Herman has talked so highly about to get a 59 rating. So, I mean, immediately, did you not see the, the one cross that he had that almost led to a goal in the World Cup qualifiers? You don't just do that if you're at a 49. Crossing's 85. The defensive side of the game as well is one you cannot take lightly. He can do it all. He's a full, well-rounded box-to-box -box midfielder. So, I mean, again, low 80s for both of this sliding and standing tackle. I'll give him just a, a fair 80. We're getting this kid good. A profile like John Herdman has never seen before. And just like that, a proper Ismail Kone. Here is your updated Ismail Kone. Now he adds a whole other side of things to this midfield. Makes things very interesting with him and Steph. It's fair. It's I'm, I'm not cheating. This is, a, this is a very fair progression of Ismail Kone. You know what they say. Third time's the charm. Third time's the charm. That's it. We got Ismail Kone juiced right up. We got Kyle Aaron juiced right up. And I don't even need to say juice because it's it's simply just their fair rating. You guys get it. Group F is where we got placed this time. We got Germany, Poland, and Northern Ireland. It's, so, again, sort of similar. All the groups that we've had so far have been relatively decent. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. It's time for a little bit of revenge. I, again, I'd be happy with the draw. No way. I don't think we can do it. We got the jacked up Kone though, but it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is the one. We got it. We got the draw. Again, sets ourselves up for success. Davies this time scores the first ever. Sorry, Jonathan David. Race from the history books. Alfonso Davies scores the very first goal for Canada in the World Cup. Gotta love him. One match down. We got the result we needed. These are the matches we kind of need to win, if not at least get a draw out of Poland. They got Lewandowski. I mean, Davies knows how to deal with them, so I'm not that worried. They got the ugly little three back. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I got confidence. I got confidence. We need this one. We gotta do better than we did last time out. We lost. That's not putting us in a strong position. No. Maybe there's some type of miracle in, in match three. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Things don't look good. I assumed we would have done better than the last time out. I mean, we got the increased Lair, we got the increased Kone, but we did not start strong. It looks very unlikely. We need to have a enormous performance against Northern Ireland. We need to pray Poland wins. Otherwise, it's 0 for 3 and we're, we're really, we're crashing right out. It comes down to this. Northern Ireland, standing in our way from the knockout stage. Will we slip up or does John Herdman have what it takes? Quick Sam, we need like a 3 to 4 nothing win if we want any shot at this. Bruh. Oh, we're, we're getting worse. We're getting, we're getting worse. I need to go back to the drawing board and, and, and see what we can do next time out. Three attempts down, three fails. The furthest we've made it is the round of 16 and we need to win. That is the objective, what we're doing here. We need to win the World Cup and we're going back to the drawing board and we'll see you guys for attempt four. It's time for our third edit. Fair edit, fair realistic edit of this episode. And the third edit is going to Tejon Buchanan. The man is at a 71. I keep mentioning the term slap in the face and I just, sorry Will Smith, but I just, it feels like we're going back and forth, left, right, and center, but we're doing it again. And we're making, we're making Tejon into the, into the midfielder that he is. It's not being unfair, it's being realistic. Cause look at these stats, giving my man a 71, didn't he make him look relatively realistic? What the hell is even that? Like giving him a 71, 
overall. So it's time to get going here. If you watch, again, it's Tasia Buchanan, man. If you watch his crossing ability, we're, we're jacking this up. It's in the 80s. He's got decent finishing. I'm going to put like high 70s. And if you've seen Tasia Buchanan's heading accuracy, he's scored a few heading goals. Beautiful one against Panama as well. I'll put, I'll put mid to low 80s. His short passing is strong, and his ball control is excellent. They already gave him a 72, so I mean, let's put that up to a, a 90. Our boy is good. Movement. Look at the acceleration. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Try to catch Tejon. Catch me if you can. Agility through the roof. Reactions as well. We're going to put those to high 80s. But that's it. That's our Tejon Buchanan updates. That should help us win a World Cup. We got our 84 Laren. We got our 82 Kone, and now we got our 88 Tejon Buchanan. Those are all the changes that were needed. Let's see what we can do. Now we've taken on some big hitters before. France, Germany, and we picked up a draw, which is crucial to how I think that we're going to qualify this time around again. Taking a look at Spain, they got their 4-3-3. Very typical. Aspilicueta, I mean, if I'm looking at it, Davies burn him a little bit with pace, but again, I'd be desperately, desperately happy with a draw. Let's see what we can do here. Quick sim. Oh. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never- 3 nothing. This is the comeback story, I'm telling you. We are on to our second match after a disappointing 3 nothing loss to Spain. Ibra is not in this Swedish side. The, the positivity is in the camp. We have an opportunity here. Quick sim. 3-1! Canada wins 3-1! Pressure's on, but this is what this is what Herman and this crew is all about, so let's get into it. It's a do-or-die moment. Finland very nervous with that back five. The 4-4-2 has been flying all tournament long. Kone, Buchanan, Laren. They got increased for a reason. It's for this reason. Jonathan David is going to be the first Canadian to ever score at the World Cup. I'm calling it now because of this. And it comes down to one quick sim. Who... Are we going to him and we did it. And it's Ismail Kone. It's the rise. Ismail Kone on the 25th gives Canada a 1-0 win. And that almost for sure puts us on to the next round. Let's go take a little look. This is a realistic save file, guys. It is. I mean, yes, I tampered a little bit with the players. But they was deserved. And now that Canada finishes second in Group F, Spain tops the group. Canada second, moving on. Sweden and Finland dumped out. Let's see who we're going to get in the round of 16. The day is here. Canada is taking on England in the round of 16. Canada's very first ever knockout match in the World Cup. England, very dangerous looking team. You see, you see Tomori on there. You guys get it. You guys get it. Just we're gonna we're gonna make him understand the mistake he's made. But Kane is up front, mounts in there. They're managed by Oliver Platt. No nonsense type management style on that side. But it all comes down to this. It comes down to one button, one quick sim away to find out if Canada is going to be moving on to the quarterfinals. <laughs> all right. All right, Canada. Heads on over to the quarterfinals. Let's take a look at this match. It's Jonathan David once again. Opens the scoring on the 53rd. Jaden Sancho makes it 1-1. And then on the 114th minute, I'm going to assume that was a Eustachio free kick. And that sends Canada on to the quarterfinals. My condolences, Mr. Mr. Oliver Platt. My condolences, but it's okay. I know deep down you're excited. And and Tamori, let's take a look at who we got, and we got Austria. The result that could not have been a better draw. Really, it couldn't. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Argentina wins that first one against Germany because I want to see Canada take on Messi. We obviously take out Austria. I hear Italy don't do the best in these type of pressure situations. So let me take on Italy. And then, as well, Portugal, so we can take on Ronaldo. That is perfect, but first things first, quarterfinal date with Austria. I mean, it's a decent team, but do they have the brotherhood aspect? I don't think so. The up-and-coming is Kone, Tejan Buchanan, Kyle Lair, they have none of them. It is time. One button, one quick sim. Are we heading to the semis? <laughs> All right, it went to extra time again. That's back-to-back. -back. It went one nothing Austria, but you can't... You can't question this Canadian team. And again, I'm, I don't know, but I'm going to assume that you stack you on the 79th minute, hit home a banger from a free kick, and then Tejon Buchanan with his rapid speed, his good finishing. It could have been on his left. It could have been on his right. It doesn't matter. But they send Canada to the semifinals, baby. 
Now let's take a look at the quarter, shall we? To see who we are taking on in the semifinals. I was hoping Argentina, because you know, want to take on Messi. It's fine, it's fine. We took out Austria. Belgium took out Italy on penalties. Sorry, Italy. It is what it is. And then Portugal took out Spain. So could we take on Ronaldo if he's, I mean, if he's still playing? I'm assuming maybe he is. They won 4-3 on penalties. In the semifinals, we have Germany. Canada versus Germany. Belgium versus Portugal. I mean, I think it's a realistic final four. <laughs> All right, let's see how we do. We are here in the semifinals. It is Canada. It is Germany. Winner goes to the World Cup final. Ismail Kone's feeling it, John Herbin's feeling it, Atiba's on the bench beside me, it's, it's time. Again, it comes down to a single button, quick sim, Canada, Germany, let's go. Oh, Canada! EK Ugbo. Alright, 20th minute, Jonathan David makes it 1-0 for Canada. Ugbo in the 60th makes it 2-0, they, oh, Werner did score, I'm sorry insulted the man but that's fine that's fine he scored in the 80th minute he probably missed three or four chances before that did not matter canada is going to the world cup man now let's go and see how the semi-finals played out as you guys saw canada took out germany 2-1 and belgium takes out portugal there's no date with ronaldo in the final but that's fine that's fine he would have been scared anyways there was a third place match and ronaldo did redeem himself he picks up a bronze taking out germany 3-1 but it's the final Canada taking on Belgium in the scorching heat in Qatar in the middle of July, July 17, 2022. It's, it's fine. All right, let's go see how we do. These type of moments are the moments that define you. I had a Tiba, my, my right hand man, my assistant manager right beside me telling me words of wisdom to then relay on to the players. It's been an emotional roller coaster. We've seen Kone, Buchanan, and Laird take their games to all, all kinds of new levels. Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies doing what they can. Eustachio has scored actually a few goals in the tournament, so big shout out to him. Who would have thought Daniel Henry and Kamal Miller would have partnered up in the World Cup final to put down these type of performances? But Belgium looks scary too. They got Lukaku, Carrasco, Hazard up there as well. It's going to be a dangerous side. Yanazai somehow snuck in that, that right wing back role. So I, again, that's where Alfonso Davies is going to have some fun. But this is it. It's been a long journey. It's been our fourth World Cup this video. Can we end it? by winning the FIFA World Cup. <sighs> Let's do this. <laughs> wow! That, that is a, that is a, wow. That is a match worthy of a World Cup final. 4-4 four, four, and then 5-4. Let's take a look at this one. Canada did it the hard way. They started off 1-0 with Kyle Laren. It was 1-1, 2-1, 2-2 Kyle Laren, 3-2 Belgium. Then Kyle Laren with a World Cup final hat trick. If that doesn't suit the type of World Cup qualifying run he had, I don't know what did. The man came to play in the finals for sure. Sending this one to extra time where Kyle Laren picks up his fourth goal in a World Cup final. And then Lukaku gets one as well. It goes to penalties. Lukaku buries it. David, Hazard. Oh, Laren, you miss, you miss it there. He scored four in the match and you missed that one. De Bruyne, Eustachio, Carrasco, Davies. And then it comes down and Yuri Tillmans to win the World Cup for Belgium. Could not do it. Buchanan does. <laughs> and they miss. And then Richie Larea. Nottingham Forest, are you watching? Because if you're not watching, you're not paying attention that Canada's won a World Cup. And... What a match to do it. That was emotional. I got emotional during that. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Canada has won the FIFA 22 World Cup. Um, the final match got me a little bit, man. That's wild. Here is the World Cup goal scoring charts. We, we weren't able to top that. Lukaku walked away with the golden boot with six. But you see in one match, Kyle Aaron jumping up to eighth, tied on fourth, four goals. Jonathan David went down. He had three throughout the tournament. And again, scored the very first World Cup goal. And let us know in the comments as well who you think is going to score the first ever Canadian World Cup goal in Qatar. In the assist category, there's only one man that was going to lead this chart. And that's Alfonso Davies. Picks up five assists in seven matches. Absolutely huge. Jonathan David picked up three assists as well. Had three goals, three assists. So not too shabby of a tournament for him there. So there you have it. We asked, could this Canadian men's national team golden generation 
win the World Cup. Can they win the World Cup in November? Potentially, if FIFA has anything to say about it, they absolutely can. It took them four chances, as well as, you know, a couple player edits, but they got the job done. Fourth try, pretty incredible. I mean, the last match had me very emotional. It's a lot of fun times. Hopefully, if you guys did enjoy this FIFA content here on One Soccer, you guys will let us know and we can do some more. We got some other fun ideas as well. And if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to drop a sub because it's rumored that it's still about 72% of you. We're getting it down. But still rumor that about 72% of you guys are not subscribed, so drop a sub. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers, friends.